hello everyone welcome to study iq so we will continue our discussion on economy uh, in the last session we have talked about determinants of economic development so we are in the module growth and economic development we have done almost all the important concepts like uh, all the important indices uh, which are actually published by UNDP along with uh, their uh, human development report okay so we have talked about five indices which are published along with this and some other indices also we have discussed okay so let's now discuss about the topic which we have left out in the previous discussion that is capital formation okay so in this session we will be talking about capital formation and we have discussed this when we discussed about economic development the determinants of economic development one of the determinant of economic development is capital formation capital formation is nothing but the investment or actually your expenditure on the capital goods okay so this is very important this is actually there in your syllabus so we are taking it separately because of that particular reason so i'll write it down what is the definition of this it refers to it refers to the process of increase in the physical stock of capital physical stock of capital like machinery factory etc okay machinery factory etc it is most important determinant of economic growth it increases productivity it increases productivity production and future productive capacity of an economy see what does this mean uh, see whenever why it is so important is because when it is produced the machines firstly at that time also it will be added to gdp okay so most of the other things it is produced and it is con it is added to gdp it is consumed and end of it right but in case of capital goods what is actually going to happen is this is produced at that time it will be added to gdp and next year this will further make a lot of other production this will be used to produce other things that will also contribute towards gdp that is the importance of capital goods and the investment or expenditure on capital goods so we'll quickly discuss about that uh, first five year plan the model which was followed was actually harrod dormer growth model and when we discussed about this i have already given you a formula the formula was economic growth rate economic growth rate equal to investment rate divided by i core what is i core i'll tell you i core means core means capital output ratio this i is increase Th that means i core is actually incremental capital output ratio okay so i core incremental capital output ratio so core is actually capital output ratio so this is what uh, capital output ratio or i core means incremental increase in capital and increase in output okay so you will see the increase in capital how much increases there in capital and how much increases there in output so increase in capital to increase in output okay so that uh, ratio is what i call i'll 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 give you an illustration with that you can understand it in a simple way there are two firms a and b so let's say a is producing this marker or this uh, the marker and b is producing this pen okay so these uh, almost the same uh, a and b are two firms now both invested 10 lakh okay so let's say 10 lakh invested 10 lakh invested and there was an output of let's say 2 lakh so this year uh, both invested the same this year there was a production or output of 2 lakh okay so here there is an output of 2 lakh and here there is an output of 2.5 lakh now if you calculate i core i core if you calculate for both what is the capital capital is 10 and in uh, output is 2 so capital to output la 
right so 10 by 2 and here 10 by 2.5 so here you will be getting 5 that means what is the ratio 5 is to 1 here you'll be getting 4 that means 4 is to 1 so what you can understand from here which now you can say low this is the i core value okay so low i core value or high this is the i core value so low value or high value is better among this which firm is doing better you can tell that by calculating this i core so it's like this only for producing this one output there is an investment of five in this case for producing this one output there is an investment of four that means this firm is using minimum investment for producing one output okay both are producing let's say one output if you are taking it in a scaled value standard value one so pr to produce one both are taking different which one is taking less is better so with less investment you are producing more so the lesser i core value will be always better more the i core value means efficiency is less what does that mean more investment is required for the output so more investment for less output is not desirable right so i core value has to be lesser so low i core value is actually good so in that way uh, you can calculate the economic growth rate now i'll give you the i core values of india during different five year plans so i core of india this can be asked in prelims so it is better uh, that you have some knowledge about this so during 1980s onwards i'll give you 1980s and then ninth plan we have talked about the plan the planning module we have done in detail i've put a lot of effort in that particular module so i hope you have already watched that module because we have done around eight sessions in that planning module and if you if you see that uh, eight sessions of 30 minutes each you don't want to read anything else it's a it's a promise okay so ninth plan 10th and 11th okay so let's see the i core values and this is something which you need to keep in your mind there is nothing to remember but just have an idea so it was more than 5 uh, during 80s and 9th plan it was 4.5 before 80s it was more than 5 i'm not getting into that 50s and 60s and all it was definitely more than 5 so 4.5 then 10th plan 4.3 11th plan 4.1 so how is it calculated investment you know the investment and you know the output so investment to output or the capital to output ratio okay so 4.1 so what you can see here uh, what you can see here or what you can interpret is the uh, this can be understood in terms of efficiency so with each plan the efficiency is actually increasing how can you tell that because low i core value is better i core value is consistently reducing efficiency is actually increasing so i core decline okay so i core is declined every plan it is declined so this is something which you need to keep in mind in the previous session i've told you the production uh, the contribution of uh, agriculture in production is consistently decreasing similarly this i core value is consistently decreasing all these things they can ask in terms of statements in prelims okay so i hope you understood the concept of i core uh, this is this this is the only way in which i can explain this that illustration i hope you understood okay so low i core value is actually better and let's see the different stages of capital formation so stages of capital formation so first is actually savings okay so people save okay now uh, savings means what it is it is your disposable income minus your uh, your consumption or expenditure okay so how will you write the disposable income you'll be writing it as yd okay y is the income uh, why not i i we have already used for investment and why we are using to represent income uh, because we understood it as yearly income so y is always we use for income in economy so y d is disposable income minus the consumption that is your savings okay then second stage is actually finance so people give money to the firms or company how through different financial institution okay uh, what the uh, financial institutions do they actually mobilize money from the households of the people and they will give it to the firms for investment okay so mobilization mobilization of savings of households for 
investment by firms through financial institutions okay so that is the second stage third one investment investment means as i've already told you uh that is the uh expenditure on capital goods okay so investment expenditure on capital good actually this is the one we are actually talking about capital formation this is the most important stage but without saving you won't get anything for investment okay so theoretically if you speak if it is a closed economy this investment and saving should be equal all the money which is saved should be invested okay if it is a closed economy unless uh, uh, the, the we are in all the money is kept in bank and if you are not talking about the cases where the money is kept in you know home all those things we ignore so theoretically if it is a closed economy savings should be equal to invest i'll come to that but now uh, let's see the different dimensions of these three let's take up savings i'll give you some data okay which can be asked in prelims what percentage of gdp is saved what percentage of uh, you know gdp is coming as investment all those things we'll see because that is that is important from exam point of view and why it is important because it is a specific topic which is given in your syllabus so you can you can always expect a question from here okay so savings uh, we will try to understand in terms of gds gds means gross domestic savings and understand here also we are talking about domestic concept so it is a territorial concept okay not national concept so gds and it is gross not net okay so you know the difference between gross net domestic national okay so how to do this gross gross versus net what is the difference this uh, net is equal to gross minus depreciation so here depreciation is not uh, avoided so depreciation is included that's why it is gross and what is domestic and national national equal to domestic plus nfia net factor income from abroad so we are not taking up this difference we are only talking about domestic here okay so that is why gross domestic savings and if you have uh, if you have missed out the this concept we have done 16 concepts like this you can go back to this uh, telegram channel you'll get those videos i've done 16 important concepts related to national income where i have explained all these concepts in a simple language with better illustrations and with that you will never forget that okay so gross domestic savings uh it was 33 percentage in the last year okay and you have to update this value currently so 33 percentage uh, of the uh, gdp and taken at current prices you know what is current prices and constant price what is the difference current price is actually constant price plus inflation uh, we can't write it when i'm saying i can i can tell that so how to get the constant price there is a formula current price divided by gdp deflator into 100 right that is theoretically correct but what is the difference between current price and constant price? Your yeah, current price and constant price? Constant price is based on a base year. So we are not talking about that. We are talking about current price here. Okay. So current price means what is today's price? So what is the difference between that base year price and today's price? It is inflation. So simply in simple language for understanding purpose, you can say current price will be uh, constant price plus inflation. But you can't simply do that and you can't make it as an expression. If you need to write it as an expression, there is a formula constant price equal to current because you will get from uh, the current price is what you get from the market divided by gdp deflator i have already told you gdp deflator is an index number which is used to measure or calculate inflation into 100 if you do this you'll get the constant price okay so we are not going to that anyway so what i want to tell you is 33 percentage uh, is that means one by third is actually going as savings and it's actually a good sign okay now, if you go for investment, now who saves? Uh, now, there can be questions uh, who saves and who's saving maximum, uh, what percentage, all this can be questions. So, who saves? If you ask me, first one will be households, okay, 70 percentage. So, who saves maximum? Household saves maximum. Secondly, private corporates. Private corporate means uh, they, they save, uh, their savings is 20 percentage. Then, public sector public sector rest of the 10 percentage now what do you mean by this uh, private corporate saving private corporate saving is actually the undistributed profit uh, see all these concepts we have done 
uh, in previous session so that's why i'm not getting into the details of this you know undistributed profit right let's suppose 10 lakh is the profit of the firm or the output of the firm you have to pay something as uh, corporate income tax let's say 2 lakh you paid as corporate income tax and what is left out uh, let's say 8 lakh is left out out of this 5 lakh uh, you will be taking that means 3 lakh you are not taking you are re you know uh, th this is not distributed okay so your this 5 lakh you are distributed as dividend to the shareholders so this 5 lakh divided by number of shareholders or number of shares is actually the uh, dividend but here this 3 lakh is not distributed this is not taken this is reinvested okay so reinvestment is an investment okay that's a saving so this 3 lakh this which is undistributed profit is what I'm talking about this private corporate saving and same as the case with public sector saving or say in public sector also it is there okay the undistributed profit is what I'm talking about savings of these two so I hope this is clear but mainly what I want to tell you is households save the maximum okay and that can be a question next we'll see uh, investment investment okay so investment like in case of savings i have told you gross domestic savings so here gross domestic and the topic of discussion today that is capital formation gross domestic capital formation and you will write it as gdcf sometimes you'll see gdcf is nothing but investment gdcf is the investment that is actually gross domestic capital formation and it is 34.2 percentage of gdp now now if you see the contribution of investment who invest more the private sector private sector 80 percentage public sector 20 percentage okay so this values is something which you need to know these two values this 34.2 you need to know this 33 percentage is the savings that is 1 by 30 you need to know this three values also you need to know out of, out of this you just need to know household is a maximum around 70 percentage so 1 by third is the savings and similarly close to 1 by third is the investment i tell you what is this difference of 1.2 Okay, for, for, for that, we will take a closed economy. If you take a closed economy, investment will be equal to savings in case of a closed economy because uh, there is no interaction with the uh, outside world. But, but now, what are the components of investment? Quickly, if you see components of investment, actually, firstly, fixed investment. You have fixed investment and then you have valuables, right? Gold, silver etc and then we have uh, change in stocks or inventories okay so in this we have different other things like raw materials semi furnished goods semi finished goods and then unsold finished goods okay see technically all the three are there theoretically but uh, basically one will come under the definition the first one will actually come under the definition suppose you earn thousand okay uh, ten thousand you earn ten thousand that what does that mean earning is all about production that much production is there so what is the production production is ten thousand this concepts you have already done so i'm just writing these values here not wasting our time if you have missed out this you have to go for the previous video otherwise i i will not be able to complete this video in you know 30 minutes okay so uh, this production uh, is a thousand simple because what you earn is all about production and suppose there is a and if you spend seven thousand what does that mean goods sold is seven thousand okay so that means the goods sold so let's suppose two thousand you put in bank two thousand in bank so this will be invested in bank this can be interpreted as 2000 capital goods sold okay so 2000 capital goods sold okay so similarly the 7000 you spend that is 7000 consumer goods sold this 2000 when you put in bank 2000 capital goods sold what about this balance thousand thousand is actually unsold goods so theoretically what I want to tell you is I equal to S if not in 1, 2 or 3. Okay, so I equal to S 
but what about what about in a open economy in open economy you have to include the foreign investment and the uh, foreign borrowings okay so we will have to talk about foreign investment and foreign borrowing so investment and borrowing so how will you write this net foreign capital inflow nfci simply you will write it net foreign capital inflow okay like we have discussed when we discussed about national versus domestic net factor income from abroad nfia similarly here nfca net foreign capital inflow so what is actually investment in open economy in closed economy investment equal to uh, you know uh, savings but here investment equal to savings plus this we need to accommodate like in case of national and domestic if you need to get national if it was a closed economy national and domestic will be same but since we had an open economy national will be equal to domestic plus nfia okay i hope you remember that similarly if we talk about investment that will be equal to savings plus nfci okay so nfci so net capital a uh, foreign capital inflow which in involves uh, investment as well as borrowings both will be there uh, why net we are taking because some indians are investing abroad so that has to be adjusted we are talking about inflow okay so this is what we have discussed as 34 0.2 okay so this investment is what we discussed just 34.2 now as i have told you the savings is 33 this is 34.2 now you might have understood why this difference of 1.2 this difference of 1.2 is coming because of this difference in nfci okay so this difference that is that otherwise 33 equal to 33 uh, because you see here the savings plus so why this 1.2 difference extra that is because of nfci that is positive here okay so that is positive and if you remember uh, if you remember gnp will be always less than gdp i told you right why because gdp is more how how gnp equal to gdp plus nfia so here you can see savings plus so you are getting extra 34.2 so here gnp should be more should be more because gdp plus but why it is less because when you're taking this difference nfia nfia value is negative but here the net inflow is actually positive here when it comes to this investment case the net inflow of foreign capital is positive but when you take net factor income from abroad that is negative because the income which is going from here and income which is coming from abroad the difference is negative more is going out from india okay so that is why gdp is more the topic we have already done but just i'm clarifying in some cases you can save some income and you can invest in pf etc right government reduce tax liability and government produce uh, actually promote this by reducing tax liability but uh you know what is the advantage for the firm in that in that case what is the advantage for you you don't want to pay tax for those money which you have invested in pf and all uh, and you have been given tax benefits for that but you know it is not for you know today you are investing getting the tax benefit and you can take it tomorrow no it is for like a three year four year five year investment right so that is actually going as investment that is why it is actually promoted by the government now one of the other important topic determinants of determinants of investment very important topic uh first one interest interest rates okay see interest is actually part of cost of production so more the interest what will happen investment will come down you cannot take loan at a very high interest rate and you can you cannot invest that is the reason why when rbi is increasing interest rates to reduce money supply when inflation is there what is actually going to happen if it is demand pull inflation rbi go for a tight monetary policy that means a contractionary policy to suck out money supply so Money, uh, contractionary policy increase the interest rates so the loans are getting uh, you know not cheaper it will be expensive you have to pay more interest cost of production increase ultimately that lead to cost push inflation that is actually a side effect okay uh, uh, offshoot of uh, you know uh, increasing interest rate but uh, investment will reduce okay so one thing what i want to tell you is if you increase interest rate investment will reduce because cost of production will inc uh, increase and ultimately it will affect the growth also okay so second one profitability expectation profitability 
expect it. in simple language you can say the business environment if it is positive there will be better investment if it is negative there won't be investment so it all depends on government policies the type of government all are now connected i've told you in the previous session the determinants of economic development there itself i've told you the type of government the type of economic system the type of economic policies all are connected with this particular point okay uh like ease of doing business whether the demand is there in the market or not if there is no demand more population will may lead to more demand okay all those things the pm once said three d's democracy demography and demand that is important okay so three d's democracy very important demography very important and even more important is demand if there is no demand nobody is going to invest okay so that's about profitability expectation it's all about the ease of doing business demand is very important okay now uh, see we have very low income that is one thing but we have already seen that 33 percentages of gdp is our savings that means one by third is our saving isn't it a paradox it's actually a paradox that low income and high saving paradox we have discussed many different type of paradox india is a land of paradox so this is also one of the paradox which need to be uh, discussed actually what are the reasons low income and uh, high saving paradox firstly uh, there are many reasons uh, cultural factors see we are not a consumerist society okay that is very one very much important reason in this case tax rebates see when you are getting a lot of tax rebates uh, government is actually promoting savings so you try to put uh, you try to you know legally evade tax through tax rebates so you put more money as investment that is also one of the reason for increasing savings and then high interest rate high interest rate see wh why high interest rate because demand population is high demand is there money supply is there so rbi increase the interest rates to suck out the money supply so what the people will do people will see this very high interest rate and people have trust in this financial institutions and they keep their money safely in the banks okay so very high interest rate actually result into very high savings there is no need to take risk by uh, investing uh, in somewhere else so that is also one of the reason okay so very high interest rate that promote savings black money uh, there is some minor case but still it is one of the reason people have trust in financial institution people trust financial institution one of the other reason is inequalities see because of inequalities this is one of the positive of inequality you have to understand this also because this was actually asked as one of the question in previous year inequality means more inequality more savings okay so this actually pos inequality increase savings increase so this is actually a positive of inequality nothing can be seen only in negative terms we have also discussed many positives of all the negative things that we have seen here there was a question uh, uh, previous year the tax gdp ratio tax gdp ratio is low the reason okay one of the choice was inequality is high one of the one of the choice was inequality is high so now what do you think is the reason i have seen many of the students are marking this as a reason uh, theoretically and practically there is a difference when the question is asked they are not asking practical uh, in economy mostly you have to answer theoretically so inequality is high means what people have uh you know uh, different people are at different income levels right so when inequality is high people having more income means they have to pay more tax right so more tax more tax means more savings okay so you have to pay more tax so is it one of the reason for decrease in tax gdp ratio no this is not the reason for decrease in tax gdp ratio because you are getting more tax if there is more inequality there are people who are at the uh, if see more more people some people who are having more income uh, I, i'll tell i'll take one example suppose there are total of 15 lakh uh, income is there one person is having 2.5 lakh 
and other person is having rest of the 12.5 lakh okay suppose these two is earning uh or let's take it as 10 lakh okay let's take it as 10 lakh so 7.5 lakh suppose these two are earning 5 lakh and 5 lakh each suppose there is no inequality then what the government will get for the for, i'm talking about the first case the first 2.5 lakh it is not uh, you know income tax is not there rest of the 2.5 lakh he will pay 10 percentage so he'll be paying 25000 okay he will also be paying 25000 now in the second case if this is the income 7.5 and 2.5 there is inequality okay high inequality this person won't be paying anything but this person will be paying how much For the 2.5, he will pay. Uh, he will pay 25k, and rest 2.5, he'll be paying at 20 percentage. That will be 50k. So government is getting much more tax if there is inequality. Equal society, the tax will be less. In equal society, tax will be more. So inequality is not a reason. Inequality is not a reason, especially if we have a progressive tax system. Inequality is not a reason for ta tax low tax GDP ratio. Because inequality is there means there are people who comes under higher income category. From them, you are getting better, more tax because their tax ratio, their, their tax rate is very high. So government is getting more actually. So theoretically, that is not the reason. Now, practically, you can tell that since the tax is high, they will evade tax and all those things you will tell. But that is practical. That is hypothetical. Okay. And we cannot conclusively tell that even though that may be the practical case. But theoretically, there is an answer. So I hope this is clear for all of you. Now, what is the paradox in China? China economic paradox is there is a high growth. High growth. See, with high growth, what will happen? High growth, high inflation. Because growth means more production, more money. So more demand like that. Okay. So high growth when it comes to high inflation should be there. And that is actually one of the problem that we faced. High growth, high inflation. But in China, high growth low inflation the reason is before that let me tell you uh, china is growing because of two reasons one is investment and the other is export they have high investment and they have high export i have already told you in case of india the investment is around 34.2 percentage okay china you know it's around 50 percentage so 50 percentage is actually investment so that you can connect here high growth and low inflation what is actually going to happen with high growth, high inflation should be there. But high growth in China, low inflation. The reason is, you know, high growth, what will happen? So here, this is this is the, this you can take now. Savings is high. Okay. So savings is so high. So since savings is high, what will happen? Investment increase. That lead to high growth. More investment, more growth. Since savings is high, do you don't have money? It's safe. Demand is less. So, inflation low. But the opposite is what actually happening in India. Not completely opposite, but savings is not that high as China. And that is why if we go like Chinese model, we also can get this, okay? High growth and low inflation. But here, in case of India, demand is so high. In China, demand is not so high. The reason is savings. So, I hope this all things are connected. All these things has to be there in your mind. I hope you understood. So let's see in another session. If you have any doubt, you can get in touch with me here. Join the Telegram channel for...